Hello, welcome to the Leveling Up podcast, which is our uh, video podcast where I get the absolute pleasure to interview uh, business owners who have done something strategic or out of the box to transform their companies. So uh, in today's episode, I'm joined by Mitchell Hunt, who is the CEO of Rapid Platform. And Mitch, look, spoiler alert, but there's a pretty big transformation story um, that we're going to hear about today. Um, and before, before we do hear about Rapid and where you've gone in the last six months, um, disclaimer for everyone watching the episode that the Rapid transformation story is actually quite closely intertwined with uh, the Level Up uh, transformation story and this sort of came about organically by chance in fact we should probably talk about that in the in the episode Mitch of how our paths did cross um but yes so yeah disclaimer there's yeah got two for the price of one in today's episode in terms of transformation stories but without further ado Mitch thank you so much for joining me on the on the podcast today um please let us know who is rapid and what's what journey have you been on to get to the company where it is today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, Jasmine. Um, the journey is, has been long and, and arduous and up and down and left and right, um, but we kind of identified oh, probably 10 years ago, I identified that there was this area between um, tech and execution that, that really didn't work very well. It was a communication error kind of problem between the organisation and, um, and end users. Um, and we really wanted to kind of jump in and provide a solution in that area. Um, so we are a tech company. Um, we've built some technology that is really focusing on giving end users or, or business analysts um, who are the people who in the dysfunctional communication thing are usually the kind of balls that are in the middle. We've got the organisation who doesn't want to understand tech. We've got the technical people who don't want to understand the organisation. We stick BAs in the middle here and just give them words to be able to kind of translate between the two. Um, and we really saw that if you have a really great BA, they can pull it all together. And if you have a really bad BA, there is no chance in hell that's gonna work. And we thought, what if we gave those BAs better tools? Like, what if we actually gave them better tools to be able to communicate, um, but also get stuff done at the same time? Um, and that's what Rapid is all about, actually taking those requirements that you get from an organization um, and really turning that into something that the organisation can use um, straight away, that your documentation and everything is all done in the same, in the same area. And um, we kind of focus on four areas, data, so the information you need to capture, workflow, what workflow needs to go through the organisation, so what tasks need to be sent to people, analytics, um, you can have data on workflow, but you can't actually see the aggregated overall what's happening, it becomes much less powerful. And then the fourth one is the custom stuff that is needed specifically for your business. Um, so not tying people down and saying, no, 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 we know the answer to all of your questions. We know we don't, um, but we give you the power that if we don't have an answer to your question, you can come up to an answer to your own question. Cool. So, so when we say tech, just to clarify, we're talking about cloud-based tools that organisations can use to be better. Correct. So um, we've, yeah. We've kind of pulled in behind Microsoft with um, with their Office 365 suite, which has been one of the most successful kind of rollouts um, of enterprise software in, in a long time. And it is a fantastic product. Um, but there is some, some areas that don't tie together. And we've really kind of come in and gone, cool. The areas where it's kind of falls apart a little bit, um, we've ducked in there and said, okay, we can provide some more structure and some more stuff to do this. So we're deeply, deeply integrated with Office 365 and what people are already using, um, but really helping people to get the most out of that, um, plus adding some secret source that, that we've kind of built on Microsoft's infrastructure in Azure and cloud computing um, to really take your organisation to the next level. Like it. Nice little level up. Yeah, like I, just, there, I thought you'd Robert. like that. <laughs> That was very cool. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I've definitely worked in organisations before where we're kind of working in teams, we're using a bit of planner, obviously, we've got Outlook. But as you say, no one's maybe using them as effectively as they could be. Does Rapid kind of sit over the top of all of those applications and, you know, enhance the use of them? Yeah, so we've really taken a different approach to what to what Microsoft has taken. So Microsoft has has always been in the, in the um, in the 
business of providing tools for people and letting people do whatever the whatever the heck they like. The, the big difference between Microsoft and let's say someone like Apple is Apple are very definitive in how you use their product. You use it, our product and you use it like this. And because you use it like this, you get a great experience. Like it is a polished, lovely experience. Microsoft is taking the other tack, which is we're going to give you a whole bunch of tools and you can use those tools in a whole bunch of different ways. But because you can use them in so many different ways, people set them up differently and people use them differently, which means you've got these tools which may help people get stuff done right now. But if you need to do training, if you need to do standardization, if you need to get all everybody on the same page, it's really, really hard to get them on the same page because everybody is doing it slightly differently. And then you get into this, this kind of riffraff and back and forth of, oh no, we should do it like this, we should do it like that. We, not giving people a single source of kind of truth to, to work towards. It's you've got multiple different sources of truth, which work for the individual small teams, but they don't work for the organization when you aggregate it together. Yeah, fantastic. And there, there might be some people watching this going, sounds pretty cool, um, but it sounds a little bit like Microsoft Dynamics. How, how is Rapid different from Dynamics? Yeah, so great, great point. And Microsoft has got Dynamics um, and Dynamics is a, is a great product um, for people in specific kind of silos who really don't want to change. Like if they just go, cool, I want to come in here and I want a box product and I want it to tell me exactly what to do and we're really not that different from, from what it is and we just want to be directed on what to do, you would be much better off with something like Dynamics. But even Microsoft has, has picked up the fact that everybody wants to fit in that box, but nobody actually fits in that box. Like nobody, everybody wants to buy that, but nobody actually falls into that box. And Microsoft has a product which they've just rebranded um, to Dataverse. And Dataverse is built in, in conjunction with um, Dynamics um, to cater for those, for those um, kind of side areas where you, you need to go in um, to adjust and to work in slightly different ways because every business is slightly different. Um, and our product would be kind of on par with, with what they do with Dataverse. The big difference is Dataverse is built with Dynamics and built with the technology that, that Dynamics has, been, uh, has done. Um, and with any, any cloud product, there needs to be some controls and stuff around it to, um, to stop you from doing things that are going to break the system and there's performance issues with that. But then there's also pricing. Um, so Microsoft in the new cloud world, they want to do per user pricing. pricing. They want to get it easy for you to get in, but then as it scales, they make their money when you scale. They don't make it when you, when you start. And we looked at that and went, okay, that's a good model to get people on board, but it's a really bad model if you want to encourage innovation. If you want to keep encouraging people to keep on using it, punishing them for using it more and punishing them by charging them more. I'm not saying it's, it's corporal punishment, but disincentivizing them is probably a better word um, to use it more doesn't help you get better innovation. It just creates weird little intricacies that people go, oh, we need 20 licenses, but the people aren't going to use it that often. So how about we go 10 licenses and then we'll get 10 licenses and we'll share five of them. We'll have five and then people will be around, which means your audit trails are out. Your, your people are kind of sharing passwords. So from a security point of view, you have no idea what's going on. Um, or the company just actually pays the money and then is just not really happy with the fact that they have they've kind of been bait and switched. Oh yeah, it was really cheap to get in, but now we have to use it at scale. It's actually really, really expensive. Um, so we don't do per user licensing. We actually license, we have the hard conversation up front and say, actually, we're going to license this per tenant, which means it doesn't matter how many users you have, it is for the organization, which means at the start, we're more expensive than Microsoft, but as you grow, you don't keep on getting, you are incentivized. The more you grow, the more you kind of use the product, the better value you get out of it. We're not trying to kind of get you on the end. We'll have a hard conversation up front which not everybody loves, but I prefer that as a, as a way to work with people. Yeah. As you say, sharing licenses and you know, what's, what's your login? What's your, I've seen that happen so many times. So it is a real problem that happens in organisations. Um, and also as well, and we'll get to this um, sort of like how rapid is different from the rest of the market. Um, actually, maybe we, maybe we should start there. What would be you know, I'm a company, I'm looking for some new piece of technology um, and I engage with Rapid. 
what what's some examples of some sort of I guess online tools that you guys can build using the rapid system just paint a picture for me yeah definitely um, so I'll give you some examples for some customers that, that we've used so we've got um, some customers who use it for their CRM so they previously used um, a product called Smartsheet um, which is kind of Excel spreadsheet <laughs> <laughs> which is Excel spreadsheets online um, and, and given some extra stuff but the technical limitations that they have um, being an Excel, Excel spreadsheet online really meant that, again, back to the idea of not having that one aggregated view, they had every kind of one of their offices as a separate smart sheet. So if they ever want to do an aggregated view of all of their different offices, they had an analytics team who had to fork through doing all of their stuff to come up with the proper reports and then you add a new centre and then you had to add the report. If you didn't add the report, the numbers were wrong. It's an unmaintainable mess. Like it's easy to get up and running, but going forward, it becomes an unmaintainable mess. Whereas we took that system and in, it probably took us two or three days to do our first prototype of that system that they could kind of use and their analytics from there, instead of taking them all this time to set up, they set it up once and then anything got added from them just automatically gets pushed with into the system. Um, so they use their CRM, which then they um, they cast the data, which is the data side of it. Then they use their end-to-end their -end lead workflow from a lead comes in the door from the website what is the actual workflow that that runs through they built that in bbmn so you can document you can see clearly exactly what steps are done um, and then working through that and realizing oh okay they could go to this office they could go to this office so we need both offices to track them and make sure the data is clean so you're getting good reports at the end but also having workflow that captures stuff that if one office does the right thing that's great but we need both offices doing the right thing so we need to have the accountability in the system actually picking up okay one of them's missed it the other one hasn't whereas a lot of systems if you've got multiple people going in if one person does the job right it marks it that, that everybody's done it right you need that granularity to actually be able to go in and see where your performing center performing offices are and your non performing offices so in this specific example which is a real example um just to summarize so you had an organization that was using smartsheet which yep. kudos to them because I see people using Excel left, right and centre and there's version control and it's a nightmare, but they're using Smartsheet um, and there was multiple sites using multiple Smartsheets and using it in different ways. You then took that Smartsheet, said, we'll park that, we'll, we'll, we'll build you a, a rapid platform, um, which was their CRM tool. So not only was there a, you know, a client list or a customer list that was all in one single source of truth, which I think is the special source um, for any organization looking for tech, having a single source of truth online accessible by everyone. Great, we've got a list, but you kind of went the next level with it and made workflows so that there was a consistent experience for customers, for internal team members, and no one had to guess what they had to do next. So um, it, it's a shame we don't have an actual demo, but if, if, if you're watching this and you would love to see a workflow in action, um, I believe there are some, some demo videos um, can, can we Available. get on the there, right side? There are, yes. Excellent, excellent. Have a look, because workflow um, for, for people like me, business people, it'll blow your mind. It's really cool. So as Mitch said, you, you can put um, like the BPMM process flow of, of a workflow, um, but the really cool part, sorry, Mitch, I'm going to totally steal your thunder, <laughs> press the socks off me, um, was the automation that came from it. So a, as an organization, you can say, okay, this is how we treat our, class, our customers or our clients. Um, this is the standard way we do it. Doesn't matter where in Australia our office is based. Um, and the automation part of it is that it actually sends tasks to people who actually have to do the work um, and what is expected of them to do it. Um, so we've just transformed a smart sheet or, you know, 20 or 30 smart sheets into a single system. <laughs> How many? 110. 110. Wow. Okay. 110 smart sheets got transformed into one system and suddenly everyone's doing things the right way, which is, I think, incredible. I'd love to hear what, how the organization has, like, you know, implemented this, but I can just imagine the efficiencies and, you know, the, the improvements to customer experience. Like, it, it must be mind blowing. Yeah. Well, there has been some some really great stuff. And one of the pieces that they did very early on from an automation piece is actually making it so um, they have a call center to chase up those leads and do everything like that from the CRM. 
is they got a new system they wanted to integrate with, which is called Pure Cloud. Great system for doing inbound and outbound dialing um, mm -hmm. and being able to, to bring all that, that information kind of together. And we came in kind of at the same time as then and them integrating with Smartsheets was going to be a nightmare, but them integrating with us was effortless because it was that single source of truth. Um, so what they managed to do was take a team that at the time, I think it was 14 people in the call centre, and they dropped that down to six um, wow. and made it so that they can actually track, okay, this is the list of phone calls you need to do today and the dialer will have the phone number, the name, it will display the information they need to make those calls. If an incoming call is coming in, it will link that incoming call to a phone number within the system. It will pop up in front of them the record that, that is the lead that is coming in for them to talk to and all of the information and all of the tracking around the phone calls that were made, how long they were, is all available in Pure Cloud, but also available in Rapid. So they had not only the level of automation of people know what to do, you've taken that next step, integrated with a very um, great product to actually make people's jobs easier. So that people are not necessarily, and it wasn't about reducing the headcount, it was about making it so you can make those calls quicker. You can get a better customer experience um, most of the headcount, if, if I'm honest, came from the fact that people don't like change. <laughs> like when change comes in, it was a big change. They went from manually dialing phone numbers to an automated thing and a totally new CRM. Like it was a big change. Um, and they just found the efficiencies that they got through doing that. They didn't need to replace those people. Like they came in and people were making calls quicker and they were happier and, and everything was working more smoothly and seamlessly. Wow. That's actually a really great example of leveraging technology to make what is, you know, dare I say, a very old business process of, you know, call centers and outbound dialing and um, making that way more efficient. And it sounds like it was a good outcome for the people who, who stayed on as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so ten, 10 years you've been building, building the software. I'm, I'm sure you've done more than just CRM though. What, what other, I guess, what, what do you call them? Like bundles or modules or features can yeah. people get in rapid? Yeah, so at the moment, we're also working with another customer and they've done a project management risk management system. Um, and then they're moving into resource planning on top of that as well um, to actually see the effect that the projects that are coming through the pipeline are actually having on the, the network um, after it kind of the decision get made at the top. Um, so really working with them um, to see, okay, what is it that, that you want? Instead of coming in and saying, cool, we've got Microsoft Project, it'll solve all of your problems because it can do project planning, it can do risk management, it can do, so I'm not sure it can do risk management, um, but it can do resourcing, it can do all that sort of stuff. Actually saying, how do you guys work? Like, what is it that, that you guys need to do? And again, using those potentially three main pieces for this particular customer, because they haven't got any custom stuff yet. Um, using those three main, what data do you need to capture? What workflow does it need to go through? And what reports do you need at the end of that, which tells you how this is the health of all of the system? Like putting those pieces together, there is infinite ways um, that we can put those together that is tailored to the particular business. Um, and for them, it has had a really, um, a really huge impact on from a visibility point of view. So they can actually see, we've got all these projects that are happening and who's working on these projects and who's it going to affect it? Is that going to be a big thing? And are these people at the end of the track who have no idea what's happening at the top, are they going to be the ones who are paying all the price for us making decisions at the top? Like, what is that actually going to look like? actually give them the visibility to say oh we can we can actually do that and we can quantify that and we can break it down we can actually see the effect that we're going to have on people before we have the effect on them rather than making the decision having the effect and going oh didn't think about that okay so we, we've crm obviously workflows feature everywhere um and workflows there's task like a task management tool i'm assuming Correct. So Beautiful. what we do with the workflow is it's not just documentation, as you mentioned, it is the documentation lines up with the execution. So you build it once and they line up, but it's the big thing of that needs to turn into a task on someone's list to actually do something because otherwise it becomes well, pro probably people watching this, if they've been in business for a while, have been in the ground enough, long enough to go, let's do our process. Our pro let's, that'll be great. We'll sit down and we'll come up with that process. It'll be fantastic. They do their process. Everybody's like, yes, that was the best thing ever. Somebody picks that up, sticks it in the top drawer, they stick it in a SharePoint drive and nobody follows it ever again. <laughs> yes. Um, we Thank really want to, yeah, yeah. We really want to go, this process is fantastic. Mapping your processes is really, really powerful but turning it into operationalized stuff that can go into people's task list, that's the secret source that makes a difference. 
Um, so we so really want to focus. Task, task yep. which is down to the individual level. Correct. There are planes flying over where I am right now. Um, so tasks, um, and then you said projects as well, which obviously pricks my ears because I do a lot of project and program management work at, at Level Up. So, so it's a you know a full end-to-end -end project management tool, and I love that you said there's risk management in there as well. Um, is that am I correct in assuming that the risk stuff's at the enterprise level as well as at the project level? Correct. And the big thing, as I mentioned before, that we try to focus on at Rapid is not compartmentalizing things, not saying, okay, you, you risk at enterprise level looks like this, and you risk it um, at kind of execution level looks like this. But risk is risk. Like you don't compartmentalize things, it is risk across the entire thing. It you should be, be aggregating those together. So you're doing the risk at the bottom level, and you can see, cool, show me the risk for this department, show me the risk for the entire thing, show me the risk. It's the same data, just sliced in different ways so that people don't have to do three risk plans, which is a operational one, a management one, and a C-suite one. Like people should just do their jobs and it should do all of those reports for them automatically. I love that. It's like utopia and it sounds <laughs> quite easy. Um, okay, so you've, you've wet our appetite. There are some cool things you can do in Rapid. Um, anything else? Put, put, the, put the hard pitch on us. What are the... What are the features that we could we could potentially use rapid for um for, for me the biggest the kind of biggest secret source that we're really working on at the moment is replacing those little things um within organizations which you mentioned earlier we kind of touched smart sheets and excel spreadsheets if we actually looked from a risk management point of view and we looked from an overall organization the amount of excel spreadsheets that are being used to run businesses as like systems would blow everybody's minds. Like it is. That is brilliant, by the way. Absolutely yeah, no, brilliant. I am. It's I love it. <laughs> exactly. I love Excel. And if you are, and you're a single person, and you're only ever going to be a single person, you're working by yourself. Don't do anything except just use Excel. Come up, get great at Excel, and just use Excel. And I won't even come and say that Rapid is better than that. If you're an individual person, it is one person working on a team. Use Excel. It is fantastic. If you are more than one person, you're working in a team. Excel scales like a lead brick. Um, it will become a giant burr in your side for your growth. And that's where you sit there and say to yourself, okay, this isn't the right tool for the thing. And we will go to something like Rapid or Smartsheets or something like that. And Rapid is for people who really want to go big. Like we're not looking at little guys who are just kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, I just want a couple of users and everything. Like if you've got, if you're a little guy and you've got dreams of world domination and hundreds of users and everything like that, come and talk to Rapid. If you're just going to stay kind of small and kind of have three or five users or anything like that, the, the cost and benefit probably doesn't work for you because we've got the enterprise level of having thousands and thousands of users with features around security, row level security, everything like that, which won't be as, as powerful for you. And then the workflow, um, which really scales um, really, really well in bigger teams rather than smaller teams. But then one of the things that people have seen um, in the last little while is the rise of analytics and especially a product called Microsoft Power BI. Um, and if you've been around a little while, you've probably seen it on your LinkedIn feeds and everything like that. And it is a fantastic, fantastic product. And we've actually said it is so powerful that we use that as our reporting engine. But we follow the mantra that we've already all, always had, which is it shouldn't be a cost on top of. So we actually embed that into our costing for our pricing, which means you don't have to worry about per user licensing for anything across the suite, but you've got all the tools that you need to actually go through capturing the data you need to do, which is your Excel part, turning that into operationalized stuff with a workflow. And then with something as powerful as Power BI, being able to get whatever insights, whatever stuff you need to get out of that and getting it back into the system and being able to actually make great decisions on that. Excellent. Now, Mitch did warn me before the episode that um, he's very passionate about Rapid and can talk about it all day, just a little bit. That's what 10 years of, you know, working on the dream will do. Um, so thank you for the overview of, of Rapid and how it works. I, I guess, didn't realise this, but Rapid as a system actually transforms businesses because anything that you're doing in Excel or a version of Excel or even handwritten notes, and I'm the first to put my hand up. I still handwrite notes. Um, but anything that you're doing in, you know, multiple systems can all be aggregated into the one place. And that's 
incredibly um, transformative for businesses and just the efficiency and the cost saving of that. It, it's mind blowing, but it's a leap for a lot of people. And it's kind of look scary. It, it's, it's big change. We're talking about integrating um, into multiple systems, maybe getting rid of some systems, bringing them into one, letting go of that Excel document. So it's a big, big change for people, but um, you know, it's, it's worth it, I think. I, I, that's what I've seen when, when people yeah. take this digital transformation step. It's 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 definitely worth it in the end. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And as you've said, it's not one of those things that is, and we know this, we've identified that it is an acting of, cool, we're going to replace your SAP, your zero, your every single system. They're essentially what happened in the market, which we saw kind of over the last 20 years, is you went from your big organisation, your big systems like SAP and stuff like that, that are a monolith that do everything but they do everything poorly. Like you can do it, but anybody who's worked with SAP, the, the kind of the legacy version, it is a giant pain in the ass. And you can get it, you can get your work done, but it takes you 10 times longer than you should. And everybody got annoyed with that. So they went, do you know what we should do? Let's just get the best of breed in this particular area and let's just go and let's get in there and let's get best of breed. So instead of having one system, you now have 10, 15, 20 different things doing different things, which sounds fantastic, but the user experience and all of those is amazing because they are focusing on one thing and that's fantastic. Until you get to the point where you want to do aggregation of information across those systems and you want to have that visibility and see, and then it becomes a nightmare. And sometimes in some cases, not even doable. Um, and now you've got this, okay, my, my organization's daily use is fantastic, but our management now, our ability to actually see what's happening, really, 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 really struggles. And that's where we're kind of trying to come in and say, well, it's not about getting rid of multiple systems. Having multiple systems is okay, but picking your best of breed in the areas that you need best of breed. Like you might have three or four systems that you definitely need that your best of breed and you just use them. And then having something like Rapid, which covers all of those areas that you use an Excel spreadsheet for, or you'd you have little apps that you don't really need them to be slick and perfect and everything like that. And actually saying, okay, let's put that in there and then using Rapid to aggregate that data together so you can have the best of both worlds. Beautiful. I love it. So what I want to talk about now is obviously the, the transformation journey that Rapid has been on. Um, I'll, I'll throw it to you in a minute, but um, to summarise, what I know about Rapid is um, for the last 10 years, you've been building like crazy, building this tech, um, doing all the coding, all the stuff. I have no idea what you're doing, Rich, at Rapid. Um, but, and you've grown, you've grown a team. So how, how big's the team now? Uh, so at the moment, we're 10 in Australia and four overseas, actually, 11 in Australia, because we had a new starter last week, and four overseas. Actually, five overseas, because we had a new starter there <laughs> two weeks ago. Excellent. So, the, I mean, sounds like the team's growing right now as well. Correct. Yeah, fantastic. So um, I guess with that growth, with the tech being where where it is, what happened? And this is a loaded question because I know the answer. But what <laughs> happened last year to, to make you guys transform? Yeah, so we we had that inflection point. Like our team is very heavily geared towards um, the engineering side of things, the, the getting the details right, making sure that the details are right. And this is scalable. And this is something that is, from a technically point of view, a a marvel of, of architectural brilliance, as the team here would love to would love to be told. Um, but the sales side of it and, and how we actually get out there and, and communicate this to customers and communicate what it is they need and what it is, we, we kind of had a struggle around that because, because one of our things that we wanted to do was be so flexible that we didn't actually have to tell anybody at any point, no, you can't do that. Like we really wanted to go for the point of we can do anything, but... I found just over the last little time telling people when people ask you what you do and you do, we can do anything. That's not helpful for them in a buying decision, which means we've got this awesome thing that we've built, particularly with that flexibility to do that. But we need to take, be a bit more self-aware and realize that people aren't technical gurus like we are who will sit there and look at it and go, oh, this is an amazing marvel of engineering genius. They actually are asking themselves, what's in it for me? And that's the thing that we're, we're looking at. And, and going through that journey, we really realised that for us as an organisation, we want the outcomes. Like all of our team, even though they're technical and they're very engineering, um, 
we want to get into businesses. We want to get our hands dirty. We actually want to help those businesses to move forward and build the tools that they need to do that. We're on the tool side of it and we want to build those tools, um, but actually helping people to understand what it is that we do was the real thing we, we struggled to, um, to do in the last six months. Yeah, and, and why now, Mitch? Is it sort of, I mean, I, I know that you guys could build forever, but did you get to a point where you're like, okay, we're ready to go. I know you've got customers today, but we could get more. Is that what happened? Yeah, definitely. And it's one of those things that all of us here in the team aren't, aren't we're not trying to build a little kind of spike them that, that we can do this engineering stuff and we have five customers and, and that's what we want to do. Like, we've got this cool tech and all of us want to see it out there. We want to see people using it. We want to see it at scale. We built it in such a way that it is enterprise grade so it can go as big as we want, but we can do a whole bunch more than we're doing right now. Um, and we want we want the tech out there. Like it's our baby. We want to sit there and say we want more people using it because we have the ability to do that. It's not necessarily about the money, even though I have no objection to making more money. It's not about that. It's about actually seeing your stuff out there and changing people's lives and changing people's businesses. Um, that's an exciting kind of thing to do. But to do that, you have to be able to tell a story and um, help people to understand why, what is in it for me? <laughs> exactly. So, so six months you had this inflection point, as you say, um, you know, crossroads, what do we do? Uh, how, what, I guess, what happened there? Obviously our paths crossed. So, I mean, LinkedIn is a fantastic tool. Uh, but you get a lot of people randomly adding you on LinkedIn and saying, be my connection. Um, and Mitch happened to um, send one of those requests to me. Um, I accepted because of course we, you know, we all want to grow our network. And one thing led to another. And then suddenly Mitch and I were, were, were chatting about business and we caught up um, and we kind of realized, well, maybe this is where you step in Mitch, but the, the gap that Mitch had identified for rapid was kind of, you know, level up sweet spot. And, and Mitch, maybe you could talk about that better. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like we, we caught up and really resonated that first call. Like it was one of those ones where you, you meet people and you're just like, we were that sort of people. Um, and, and Jasmine came in and said, oh, I could, I could do a health check for you. So she came in and did a health check for us and identified way more things than I wanted to admit of things that we, <laughs> we needed to work on. Um, and and that marketing piece, that that sales piece was was one of the big things that of all the things is that the health check does a lot more than just just the marketing stuff. Um, but the big thing that was going to inhibit our growth was um, was that piece around, okay, what the hell do you do? Um, and and really working through, okay, where how does that work and, and how do we move forward with that? Beautiful. So health check and then um you kind of said, hey, would you like to stick around? Help us with our strategy. Help us get, you know, the marketing and the sales engine kind of up and running. And I said, absolutely. Level Up would love to work with Rapid on this because um, that's exactly the kind of, you know, transformation and taking to a business to the next level that, that we thrive on at, at Level Up. So it has been, oh, five months now, six months now of working together and we're about, we're so close to, to launching the strategy, which is really cool. Um, but for everyone watching this, and this is the, I guess, the crux of what I want to talk about today. What has transformed in your company, um, you know, since we've been working together? What, has there been any shift? Uh, yeah. So, so the dynamic that we had and, and me and Jasmine went back and forth on this one way more than either of us really wanted to, um, was we identified ourselves as a tech company. Um, we wanted to be, I had a, I had a fear um, of, of becoming too much of a consulting company, even though um, consulting is a part of what ne is necessary for us to do. I've seen too often in, in organisations that um, you have stuff that drags you off your core um, strengths um, and consulting could very quickly turn um, a very versatile and flexible and, um, and agile platform into something that has gone in a particular direction because the client drags you in that direction. Um, and we wanted to kind of make that differentiation. We say, no, 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 we're a tech company and we help consulting companies. And in that, in that kind of conversation back and forth with, um, with Jasmine, we looked at it and went, but as a tech company, are we that much different from, from a Microsoft or a Salesforce? And what, like, why would people come with us from a tech point of view? And, the differentiators weren't really there. Um, 
it, it was one of those things that in a, in a market that has a lot of players in it, it just disappeared into the background. Whereas when we started looking at it from the point of view of, but you build this tool to make BAs and make people who can understand the problems way more efficient, like way more efficient. What if we were actually, that's the part that we were focusing on, the actual end-to-end -end transformation, instead of saying customers just want a piece of tech, customers don't want a piece of tech, customers want outcomes. They actually want someone to come along and take the journey with them, which includes training. It includes change in management. It includes requirements gathering. It includes voice of the customer. It includes design thinking. It includes all of those different pieces that actually all go together with an awesome tool like, like Rapid to actually get phenomenal outcomes for customers. The actual full end-to-end -end digital transformation journey, that's where there's interesting play. That's where your Microsoft and your Salesforce aren't, um, aren't kind of playing. They're tech solutions and you have your internal people to do change, to do training, to do all of those different things. What if we actually said that's, that's what we're playing? We're actually playing in the end-to-end -end digital transformation space and the tech makes us, is, a, um, is a point that makes us differentiated that, that we can do it quicker and we can do it more efficiently and we can hand over to teams and we can do all of these different things but the tech isn't the focus. Um, the tech is the kind of secret source. The focus is getting outcomes for customers. Yeah, and I'm, I'm personally level up very excited about this, you know, getting out there and doing it. Um, and we've called it the rapid way. So it's taking, as Mitch said, the, the strengths that rapid has currently um, that you have built over the last 10 years. So honestly, you guys should see how quickly these guys can configure the software. Like it is very quick. It is exactly to your requirements in real time. Amazing. Um, but we're also marrying that now to getting really deep into what is the outcome we're trying to achieve. Uh, and in my experience, um, working in a whole range of companies, what, what's decided in the boardroom is not actually the reality, <laughs> um, which is why I'm personally very passionate about design thinking. So the strength of rapid combined with design thinking, we now have this incredible process, um, which, you know, it, it's not unique, um, but it certainly is, it's very cool. And we're really excited about getting out into the, the Australian market and implementing it. Um, but yeah, suddenly we're going to be able to configure rapid for an organization exactly what they need and not just what the executives say, what end users actually need and want. Um, and the way we do that is we're actually going to get out there, spend time in organizations, spend time with end users, and we're going to we're going to create this together, which is really cool. Um, and anyone that's done a project before and anyone who's in change management can probably comment below and um, tell us how hard it can be um, when you're trying to, particularly technology, jam it into um, a department or in organizations and say, love it, you'll it'll change your life. And you know what happens? People go, I don't like it. You haven't taken me on the journey. I haven't been part of the design. I'm tapping out. And that happens all the time, um, which is really unfortunate because tech is so powerful um, to, to efficiency, to cost savings, um, to the customer experience. So um, I guess I don't want to speak for you, Mitch, but um, I'm personally very excited about this new approach at Rapid where we start with the customer, um, we build something that absolutely meets their needs and the customer is front and center every time. Uh, the end user, I should say, is, is front and center the whole way through. So by the time it's deployed, this big digital transformation, everyone's saying, gimme, 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 I'm ready, let's do it. Um, and there's none of that, you know, people going back to Excel, which is great. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and actually giving people that, that ability to actually say, well, I don't need to go to Excel, exactly as you said there. I don't need to go and build my thing on the side because if I ask IT, it's going to get stuck in bureaucracy and everything like that. We can actually do it in such a way that people can be empowered to, to use the system going forward. Because as COVID has showed us, pivoting and being able to move quickly and do everything like that is like, it's part of the course now. Like it's no longer something that that's a differentiator. If you don't do that as an organisation, you may not survive. Um, and having people with the millennials coming through and the new generation coming through who are less scared of tech, you've got two choices. They're either going to provision their own stuff on the side and you're going to have a whole bunch of shadow IT systems on the side that they're just doing their own thing because they want to get stuff done and they're I've going to do it on the side. Too. <laughs> yeah, they're either going to do that and get stuff done and then when they leave, nobody's going to have any training, there's going to be no documentation, nobody's going to own that system. Plus, 
there's privacy issues, there's all of the different things with that, that these people are getting in and getting stuff done, which is fantastic. Or you can have a system like Rapid where those people can still do exactly the same thing. They can still get in, they can still get, get stuff done, but the organisation has control of that. They actually have IT with oversight over that. They have privacy oversight over that. They actually have them with the flexibility to build what they need to do, but within the ecosystem that gives them the benefits to do it really quickly, but then gives the support, gives the support of your internal people who have been trained on it, but uh, the support of Rapid as well. Like part of our offering is the fact that people can call up and say, hey, I'm trying to do this thing, can you help? And actually walking them through building that stuff themselves because it's not a tool that's been built for hugely technical people that if you don't have an advanced IT degree and everything like that, you can't do anything. It's built for people who are your power users. <laughs> which is so, amazing yeah they can come in and they know the organization they know what they want and they want to keep on going and they will learn but they probably learn best when they're actually running against a problem that means something to them right now not in a in a four-hour training session where i tell them okay guys we're all going to build an asset management system but i don't need an asset management system i don't care like what if you could actually do that training? You could take that down on that journey on something that means something to them. And then that one means the second time they don't need to call you as much. The first one might be 60% we help them with. It'll be 40%, it'll be 20%. Getting down to that point where they can actually start building out their system without our intervention. And that's your interesting, interesting piece where organisations are now in control of their own digital transformation rather than needing us to hold their hand the entire way. And that doesn't mean that we won't hold their hand but they don't need us to. It's now a choice. Yeah, I think that's a really, a really good point. And I, I want to ask you about COVID because um, obviously a lot of people had to um, transform and pivot overnight with legislation changes, you know, things like JobKeeper and I don't know, work from home. I don't know. You probably have a great example of um, a COVID implication for one of your clients or a few of your clients. Um, but yeah, I think, in you know, again, in my experience, you have these fantastic great organizations with great technology, um, but to actually get a change, you know, it's a new project, it's going to take multiple weeks or months, um, and it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. So um, you, you, you're fighting tooth and nail just to get the funding, let alone, you know, building something. So it's not, it's not quick. Sometimes it can be quick. This is obviously not across the board, but um, yeah, in my experience, probably from project land, um, that's, that's a new project every single time um, and that's hard and that's you can't make changes in real time so I think that's an advantage of rapid but yeah I do want to come back to that question about COVID so Mitch did you have any clients that were impacted by you know a COVID restriction or a COVID change? Yeah so we have some clients in childcare um, so childcare was reasonably heavily affected by it with with closures at the start and then with with the free um, yes. with the free childcare and everything like that like it was a big thing for them one of the things I had to do overnight like it was we got the message on by Tuesday and then by Wednesday like it was it was super super quick of how are we going to track these new COVID forms like we need to have if we have someone come in and say that they've got COVID like how do we do our, our tracking and our which people came in the centres and which ones didn't and everything like that and we were able to spin up I think it took us about two hours sitting there and um, and doing it a form and a workflow of how they were going to track that. Um, and that gave them the solution for their COVID, sort of, um, their COVID process, which they could iterate and they could, they could work through um, to actually be able to do that because it wasn't one of those things where you're like, oh, we'll go, no, we need it now. Like there is no choice on this. We need it right now. And the tool makes it easy for us to go, okay, this is what we do. And what they found over time, which is one of the big things that we're proponents of, is you don't know what you don't know. Um, so they came up with this COVID form and again, it's it's unprecedented what what happened so they're doing this form like we're gonna have to check this and we're gonna have to check this and we're gonna have to check this and over time as they were using it they actually realized nobody's filling that in properly and we don't actually need the information and you can actually over time just go cool let's take that off take that off take it off we've actually learned by doing what it is rather than sitting there and having this intellectual debate about what could possibly or what doesn't possibly happen is this requirements? <laughs> exactly you just get in there. And you get something out the door. And as you're as you're building it while you're flying the plane, you are actually going forward and getting this stuff done. But you're getting forward momentum, and that's getting buy-in. And buy-in is is getting you further momentum. But then people, as Jasmine said, with the design thinking, people are involved. 
this isn't this isn't something we're doing to people. We're not doing digital transformation to people. We're doing it with people um, and taking them on their journey and getting their their ideas and their opinions. And they can actually start feeling like, oh, I have a voice here. Like I can actually do something. That's an interesting um, an interesting thing within you know within any organisation. I can't even talk. I'm that excited um, to be able to actually have empowered people because they feel like they have the ability to make a difference um, and that's cool. Absolutely and I think we can all cast our minds back to 2020. There literally were changes overnight. You'd wake up and there was a new change or a new border restriction um, and I actually remember, remember the childcare um, one personally because I was like oh should I take up the free childcare? Um, <laughs> but that, that would have been a game, a game changer for that business because I think if, if it wasn't overnight, it would have been less than a week that they had to get this stood up and, and out there. So, um, and when we're talking about small children as well, you want to be compliant, you want to have your system correct, um, rather than a paper form and, yeah. and, and multiple centres. So that would have been an absolute game changer. Yes. And the team that we did that for, we're blown away by the light. But, oh, sorry, when's it going to be finished? I'm like, it's done. Like, but we just had a meeting. I was like, yeah, it's done. Like, I don't understand what the problem is. Really live up to the rapid name. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was that thing of, oh, so we can go and use it now. Yes, you can go and use it now. Like, that's the whole idea that this shouldn't be that hard. Like, we don't need to make it the, the big rigmarole that it is. And as you mentioned before, like, project management and figuring out what the priorities and things to do and everything like that is a big thing within organisations because there are so many things to do it's not that it, it's not valuable. Is it the most valuable? Um, and organisations look at it from the from the project point of view. If you're working with external contractors, you put a whole bunch of rigor on that. But if it's internal resources and people are building an Excel spreadsheet by themselves, they could literally burn three months of time before anybody knows what they're doing. And you've got this thing that they they've put that effort into this thing which you're going to burn to the ground in the end. What if that person could spend that time doing something which is actually transferable and moving forward what if they could have a way of working that that gives them some structure and some everything like that to actually do it in the right way to in, in include the right people that's a it's a whole different um, way of doing digital transformation and it's not we only do projects or we only do it internally what if you could do both like why do you need to choose i love it i love it well we could talk all day we often do i literally could <laughs> yes um but this was, I guess, a bit of a surprise package in terms of there was just transformation everywhere. I think every topic we talked about. So, you know, your company has transferred, um, transformed, I should say, from a tech company now to a digital transformation end-to-end -end consultancy. So a bit of a big change. Um, you know, you're actually transforming people's organisations by either having a single source of truth or having something that sits over the top of their systems that integrates into them, like mind-blowing um data is power knowledge yes. is always good um and then as well like we talked about if a company does need to transform quickly rapid actually enables you to do that um and i think maybe 2019 or earlier we would have gone yeah 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 we've got months but the last 12 months have really shown us that anything can happen quickly um and even like of course you know COVID aside business continuity planning like crises do happen in, in businesses regularly Definitely. And leverage systems to help you with that and of, of course us being Queenslanders we know that the weather has a lot to do with that sometimes so now I'm going into a rabbit hole but anyway <laughs> lots of transformation We're, you're transforming the lives of end users as well you are like you are the transformation specialist <laughs> <laughs> well, that's well, that's the team here we've built a fantastic fantastic team here and it is how do we do things differently like this isn't a business that is let's follow the status quo and let's just let's just rinse and repeat and, and figure out what's done like everybody knows we've got these in jokes the elephants in the room of yeah everybody knows that that's inefficient but there isn't a better way and we're like but there can be like if we actually spend the time we actually do the work there can be a better way and let's do that like let's actually try and transform the way things are done Love it. Well, what a what a good note to end on. Find a better way. Um, now, if you'd like to learn more about Rapid Platform, uh, the website is www.rapidplatform.com.au. Have I given that right, Mitch? Yes. 
beautiful. Um, of course, you can follow um, Level Up or Rapid on all the socials. Um, and thank you, Mitch. Thank you so much for your time, sharing with us yeah. your passion. Um, please do, I, I do recommend if you're watching this episode um, and you've gotten to the end, um, follow Level Up or Rapid um, on, on social media because Spoiler alert, we've got some pretty big updates coming uh, in the next few weeks, in the next few months. Um, and we're actually going to be filming our own digital transformation journey at Rapid. Um, so if you want to see, how, you know, how clunky uh, a, cha a change process can be internally in, the, in a company and, and our journey to, you know, bringing this amazing end-to-end -end process um, to companies throughout Australia, tune in. It'll be great viewing. <laughs> it will it's like it'll be literally like big brother like it'll be like the things you're just like oh are people really like that like yes that's the reality marketing doesn't want to tell you that but we all know yes yes all right thank you everybody um i'll see you next episode on the leveling up vodcast um and as always follow our page and we'll see you next time see you later